All right, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here. We are at the top of the hour. We're ready to get started. You're at the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling, uh, virtual college fair powered by Strive Scan. My name is Sabelle Rasim. I'll be your facilitator for this evening. Before we get started with the fun and learning about these amazing institutions here this evening, I have a quick uh, couple announcements, just housekeeping items for you all. You're going to be encouraged to ask questions throughout the entire virtual college fair. So please do so. We definitely, definitely encourage it. But how do you do that? Well, you're gonna go ahead and click that Q&A button down at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. Use that Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. And I stress, at any time. Do not wait until the last minute or the last presenter presenting because we do not have a live Q&A session at the end with your questions. So I do not want to get your questions not answered. So please uh, get those questions in as soon as possible throughout the entire virtual college fair. Also, when you're asking questions, please address the institution that the question is for so we all know who the question goes to. Also, fun little fact, although your chat is disabled on your end, uh, the presenters might be putting some great information in the chat, like their contact information or some links they want you to check out. So please make sure if you see some notifications pop up in the chat, you go ahead and check those out as well. Your camera and microphone are turned off. You're muted. Video is turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So uh, checking out the chat and using that Q&A button definitely is important throughout the session. Also, I want to remind you all to sign up for more sessions. This is one out of many, many college presentations offered this evening. So sign up for a session for the next time slot. Last but certainly not least, the recording will be available. So in the next coming days, you can check out these sessions that are all being recorded at strivescan.com backslash Illinois. If you just want to relive the fun or maybe mom missed out on tonight, you can definitely check those out. Without further ado, I would love to get started with Saginaw Valley State University, and then we will continue on from there. Hi. Oh, am I right? Hi, this is Melinda Gracias from Saginaw Valley State University. I'm sorry, I just had to make sure my computer was working right. Um, this is our campus. I This is one of my favorite things about our campus is our campus. We are a camp, campus out there and it looks, you know, this is a beautiful shot of our campus and the rural area that surrounds us. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to be in the fall and it's a beautiful place to be in the spring when the blossoms start happening. Um, as you can see on our campus here, this is our um, athletic facilities. They are amazing. Um, state-of-the-art facilities for our, our all of our Division II uh, athletic programs. In the middle of our campus is our amazing dorms. And then what's really nice about this campus, because we are in Michigan, sometimes it gets a little cold and snowy and icy there. And you can walk almost across our campus without going outside, except for maybe crossing the street to the athletic facility. Um, so that's it's, this is one of my favorite things, is, is our campus is a beautiful campus. We are in Michigan, as we as I just stated. We are in the heart of the Great Lakes Bay area, which is right on Lake Huron. It's beautiful, beautiful area. Many of our students do hit the beach now and again. Um, but what's really nice about our area is we are pocketed within three very nice um, larger cities, Saginaw, Bay City, and Midland. And this gives our students a very diverse community to have so many opportunities to get involved and get engaged in their community. Um, with 8,000 students on campus, we have a lot of resources for our community. Um, our nursing students have uh, four or five different medical facilities to, to do clinicals. Our teachers, our teachers in our education department has uh, rural schools, public schools, private schools, large schools, small schools, so they can get exposed to so many different things because of the location of our campus within those three cities. Our engineering students are, have an opportunity to even go down to Detroit and work with a GM and Ford and do some internships in that area. So it's a beautiful, beautiful area. Lots of students like to come to us just because of where our campus is, is located and um, get involved in a lot of different things very, very easily. We are a campus that has over 100 different undergraduate and graduate programs. Um, we are, our largest program probably on our campus is our nursing program. We actually have one of the largest nursing um, programs within the state of Michigan. 
Our next largest program is our education and then into our um, engineering and psychology and, and business. We have a very large and, and exciting new business program going on our campus. They just built a beautiful big building. And again, they connected it so students don't have to go outside. So it gives them a lot of great opportunities to do a lot of different things on campus. We have a moot court team on our campus that ties in with our pre-law students or our criminal justice students, which is, gives them a really great opportunity to compete against some of those big schools like Duke or University of Chicago, and they get real trial experience. It's amazing. Our business program is accredited, the AACSB, and they're in the top 5% for those business programs. So there's a lot of opportunity to get into a lot of different programs. We are the Cardinals, as we say, of SVSU. We are a very competitive and fierce school. We have some amazing facilities on our campus, like you'll see there in that building. Our building is an indoor football, soccer, and track. We have a beautiful, beautiful pool. I can say that because I'm a parent of a swimmer. Um, I spent many, many hours, and in that picture, I'm probably in that picture somewhere. Um, our field house um, has indoor football, like I said, soccer, track, and they even have a golf program in there. And again, they won't let me touch that. I don't know why. Um, in addition to our varsity sports, we have well over 36 intramural leagues going on, club teams going on. So there's no reason our students can't get involved with a lot of physical fitness and, and mental health um, programs within our athletic facilities there. They build lifelong friendships as a result of being a part of all those great programs on our athletic um, program uh, building, excuse me. Um, our dorms, our dorms are amazing. I will say this as a parent of a student who lived in the dorms for three years. They are beautiful. They are ranked number one in the nation. What's nice about them is that they have private bedrooms, private bathrooms, free laundry, free parking. Um, air conditioning, internet, cable TV. Um, so they really make it feel like it's that those students second home, which is really, really nice. In addition to teaching our students how to live independently, we have well over 200 student clubs that are tied within those dorms and then they get to know people that's going on in those campus. Some of the favorite clubs, and I really wanna join this club is the Pie Club where they eat pie once a month. But what's really nice is they get together and they discuss on how they can serve their community. All of our clubs and organizations get in there and they learn how to give back and be a part of a community service program. It's amazing what these kids do. A cost, we are the best value for the state of Michigan in the pub, of public universities. Um, as you can see on the chart there, 36,565. And if you take the red and white award, which is really an easy award to get, um, 2.5, you are guaranteed then to be in the $20,000, 900 range for tuition. So it makes it very, very affordable. Last but not least, we have some amazing scholarships out there. Those scholarships are based on your GPA. They are not required or based on an SAT or an ACT score. So in addition to the red and white award, which reduces tuition, we have some amazing scholarships will then decrease that tuition cost one more step. And then you add on top of that those private scholarships. Again, it, it, it brings it in. Last but not least, it's still easy to apply. You can apply for free. You can apply for free. We're still taking seniors when and juniors. You can apply as of July 1. Application is svsu.edu backslash apply. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Saginaw Valley State University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Alverno College. All right. Hello, my name is Martha Chavarria and I am the admissions counselor of, and I cover Illinois, so if you are applying, have questions, I am the person um, that will be working with you. So Alverno College is located in Milwaukee. It's on the south side of Milwaukee. I would say we're about an hour and a half, no more than two hours from downtown Chicago, depending on traffic. Um, we are a smaller school. Um, we have about 1,100 students um, in our undergrad program, and we have about 500 in our graduate program. We are a small women's college. Um, so starting out um, when attending classes, it's really going to be about 9 to 1 student-faculty ratio. 
about 50% of our student populations are women of color, and then 72% are first generation students attending college. Um, HSI, so we are a Hispanic serving institution, the first in the state of Wisconsin. So what that means is about 30% of our students are Latinx students, um, and how that benefits everyone is we get additional funding for that, and some of that money, um, that money is um, allotted for different programs, and right now what is being allotted for is we're opening a greenhouse. We're gonna build a greenhouse on campus. So that's gonna be really fun. Um, we have 30 programs, um, 30 plus programs um, just for majors and then including our minors, it goes up to 60. And then in order to graduate, we do require 100% internships. And then those, uh, you get help uh, securing those. So it's not like you have to go out and secure those on your own. At that point, you'll have, um, have faculty advisor that helps you with that. And then why attend a women's college? So we asked our students and our students feel that it gives them greater success in school. We have a very strong alumni network across the United States. It is women-centered. And because of that, you know, most all our students tell us that it lets them find their voice and it just motivates them to be leaders in their prospective fields. On top of being a women's college, we are a Catholic institution. You do not have to be Catholic to attend. We have about 30 different denominations that are represented on campus. What our value and what our mission does consist of is our Franciscan roots. So what we do is we are very passionate about giving back, especially about educating others, giving back to our community. Um, we have days on campus where our campus will close. We will go out and volunteer in the Milwaukee area. Um, so it's really something that we're passionate about. Actually, one of our uh, scholarships, it's the Eleanor Roosevelt Scholarship. It has nothing to do with grades. It has everything to do with the student and, uh, and what they have done during their high school years as far as giving back to the community. Um, and that's for a full ride. So if you're a junior, um, keep an eye out for that. And then, yeah, so basically just about giving back. And then I would say these, off to the side here are uh, our most popular majors. We have a really big nursing program at Alverno and then social work, psychology, music therapy are also popular. Among the other uh, majors that are popular are business and um, education. And then for nursing, a lot of students like us because we don't have um, a wait list or like a lottery system to get into clinicals. Um, so that is appealing to a lot of students. And then I mentioned earlier, so in order to graduate, um, we do require each student to have at least one internship. Some majors will require more than one. For example, nursing, they'll call it, you know, clinicals. And then like education will have more than one internship. And the reason why is we, do, um, we don't have letter grades, so it's all about hands-on experience. So that is why we are required students to have, you know, to complete an internship. And then we just list some of our uh, companies that we work with in the Milwaukee area. Um, so if you're from the area, you'll recognize, you know, Milwaukee County Zoo, Harley Davidson, the Medical College. So it's like, again, it's basically giving students hands-on experience. Those internships can lead to other jobs. So we have a student uh, who graduated last May. Um, she had an internship and that led to a part-time job while she was still in school finishing her degree. And then, you know, right now, now, as she has finished, she still works with that company part time. And then uh, living on campus. So we are about 70% of our students commute, but we do have uh, dorms. We actually have two dorms, so 30% do live on campus. There's different places and different spaces on campus where you can hang out. Um, although um, things are limited right now, um, we do have things that are open. So we have our Inferno Cafe, we have um, our Hudson is where it's like our cafeteria. And then there's different spaces that you can go study the library, things like that. We have an A store or our swag store. And then if you're living in the residence halls, it's free parking. You have laundry on site. Um, there's sh shuttle services. So if you don't bring a car to campus, um, they do offer shuttle services to help you um, get acquainted with the area and then go shopping and things like that. And then if you don't live on campus, um, you know, all those activities, things like that, you are still more, more than welcome to uh, participate in. Uh, so financial aid. So we offer different scholarships based on your GPA. We are test optional at the moment. So you do not uh, need to submit your ACT scores. And then 
you would fill out, uh, well, for scholarships, they start at 12,000 and they go all the way up to 18,000. And it just depends on your GPA. Um, so then you file for FAFSA, then there's grants and then student loans, of course, and then student employment, you can work on campus and earn money towards tuition, or you can have that money like paid to yourself. We also, I don't actually know why it's not in here. We do have sports. We are division three. So we have seven sports here on campus. And then the last, it is a free to apply. Um, it doesn't take long. We don't require an essay. You would just need to go onto our website, um, create an account, uh, submit your high school transcripts. We are still taking in-person visits. So you can go to alverno.edu uh, backslash virtual visits um, and you can uh, sign up. And even though it says virtual visits, uh, Above there, there is visits and we can coordinate a time where you can come on campus. We just limit it to three and then of course masks required. Um, but yeah, and then that is what I have for Alverno. Thank All you. right, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Alverno College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have George Williams College of Aurora University. All right, hello everyone. My name is Kimberly Pauls Grove and I am your admission counselor for George Williams College. I represent the Illinois um, region of our campus. Um, George Williams College is um, in the state of Wisconsin. We are on Geneva Lake. So if you know where Lake Geneva is, we are about seven miles to the west of um, Lake Geneva. We are about an hour and 45 minutes north of Aurora University, which is our main campus. Um, everything is housed out of Illinois. So even though we're based in Wisconsin, we are considered an Illinois campus. That does benefit our Illinois students um, once we go into the financial aid section. George Williams College um, is very affordable. We are a nice small one-on-one -on -one campus. We have a 12 to one student faculty ratio. Um, a free application with no essays required. We are test optional. We also operate off of rolling admissions. So at any point throughout your year, you are more than welcome to apply. We have opened up our applications for our juniors as well. So if you are a junior and you're interested, you're more than welcome to apply. Um, our tuition and fees is roughly $26,760 for this next upcoming year. And then our room and board is 9,940. That is an average cost. And I'll also talk about that a little bit later in the slide. The discovery program is another awesome program that George Williams does have. It's for our students that maybe aren't meeting those admission requirements, um, but still really want that four-year experience. They want to live on campus. Um, we have this program put into place for those students to come in, meet with us. They do an interview and they get academic coaching, extra support, extra tutoring, extra one-on-one -on -one attention on top of everything that they would have already received as a traditional GWC student. We are rolling out our third year of that program and we have been seeing great success in that program. Here are our scholarships for George Williams College. So with that tuition being roughly $27,000, none of our students pay that full sticker price. Every single student that walks onto campus receives one of our merit-based scholarships ranging from $7,000 to $15,000. Those scholarships are based on your GPA if you are test optional or your GPA and SAT or ACT scores if you include that testing score. If you receive that $15,000 scholarship, that is our top scholarship, it actually cuts your tuition in well over half. Um, so it does decrease the cost very, very quickly. Between the state of Illinois and Wisconsin, we are one of the most affordable private institutions that you could attend. Um, additional scholarships that we have, we have our Wisconsin scholarship for our Wisconsin students. We have our McHenry County scholarship for those that live in McHenry County. And then if anyone is an alumni from Aurora or GWC and their student is coming in, they're also granted an extra $1,000. At George Williams, we do have the option for our students to apply for our presidential scholarship. It is a full tuition scholarship and it's awarded to two students that are in first year standing. Um, they have their tuition fully covered, um, which is a phenomenal opportunity for our students. Um, and then they would just be responsible for their room and board fee. 
With our academics being as small as we are, we have about 175 undergrads on our campus, which is where that 12 to one student faculty ratio comes into play. Um, we have four majors. So nursing is by far our largest on campus, where we have 32 nursing students in the program. Um, so once again, very hands-on, one-on-one attention, psychology, social work, and then our business, which has five different tracks to it. And we also have an undecided program, as we know all students don't know what they maybe want to do. So we're here to help them decide that. We also have four residential halls on campus. This is our kind of breakdown of our three, four different um, rooms. Oak and Hickory are our mirror image dorms. They have more of a cabin style feel. They have a fire pit on the outside of them as well, but all of our buildings have cable, air conditioning, heat, um, their own personal bathrooms as well. The Oak and Hickory are very, very spacious and some of the rooms can hold up to three students, which helps bring down that housing cost. Emory resembles a hotel room, very, very similar, very spacious in there again. Once again, private bathrooms. Winston Paul is our last dorm room, and that one also resembles that hotel style feel as well. On campus, you have a beautiful view of the Geneva Lake. Um, there's a walking path around campus that you can take. We have Yerkes Observatory up the way. 12 student clubs and organizations and more, depending on what the students are interested in, if they're creating more, two open fire pits, um, and then a bunch of different student activities that happen throughout the semester as well. This is our contact information if you would like to get a hold of George Williams College. Um, that is our general line there. And then that, that is me on the bottom, your freshman admission counselor. Stay connected with GWC and thank you for your time and I hope to hear from you soon. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for George Williams College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have North Central College. All right, what's up everybody? So my name is Dan Schifferl. I'm an admissions counselor at North Central College. Um, and you know, let me turn my video on here. There we go. So who are we? We are located in um, Naperville, Illinois. And we really help students uh, exceed their personal best. And we do this with three pillars. Um, first is by elevating the student confidence uh, through inspired instruction, um, through which we then help students realize their direction. Um, with this philosophy, we have uh, accrued some national recognition. Um, US News and World Report named us among one of America's best colleges. Money Magazine calls us one of the best colleges for your money. Forbes ranks us among one of America's top colleges, and then Naperville, where we're um, located, um, is also ranked number three place or best cities to live in in the U in the U.S. Um, we're made up of about 3,000 students. Uh, 2,700 are currently enrolled in our undergraduate programs. Uh, 300 in our graduate programs. 40% of our students are first generation, um, and we do have a nationally recognized first generation program, um, which is called Cardinal First. It's a support uh, system created of faculty, staff, and other students who are also first generation. So a lot of the struggles that typically first generation students face, we really help to alleviate those. Um, also too, if you attend 75% of the events that Cardinal First put on on campus, you also receive a scholarship too for your remaining three years. We're also a big athletic school. So currently we have um, 27 intercollegiate sports. We are NCAA division three. Um, 40 national team titles, um, which is more than every other school in our conference combined. Um, this past, well, I should say 2019, COVID canceled 2020, but um, our football team did win the national title. Uh, triathlon, our women's triathlon team won their fourth consecutive national title. Um, men's cross country were national runners up. Track and field indoor were um, national champions too as well. Um, also though, baseball is ranked in the top 10. Basketball is ranked in the top 10. Um, wrestling, both men's and women's, is ranked in the top 10 and both had national champions this year as well. Um, soccer last year hosted one of their first playoff games in school history. So um, as far as athletics go, uh, it's very integrated into our culture on campus. We're also located in the ideal college town. I mentioned before, uh, Naperville is currently ranked, ranked number three uh, best city to live in the country. Um, it's made up of about 150 citizens. Uh, but there's 150 different restaurants, shops, cafes, all located within that downtown area. Um, 
it, we're really fortunate in the sense that that Naperville downtown area is really well known just in the suburbs in general. Um, there's also two miles of what is the Naperville Riverwalk, and there's lots of different parks, um, different gazebos, different benches that, you, that are located along that Riverwalk. So if you're looking to get out of the, the campus area, get out of the downtown area, there's plenty else to do too that's, that's just within walking distance. Also too, we're located really close to the city of Chicago. Um, so there's all sorts of different opportunities that students can take advantage of, um, different internship opportunities. Uh, we have students that go to class Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but Tuesday, Thursday, they're catching the train and they're down in downtown Chicago working an internship. So um, again, lots of different opportunities to look into there. Um, we have a train station located about a block off our campus and Naperville is really fortunate in which we have the most express lines on the BNSF. So uh, a train ride into downtown is about 30 minutes from, um, from Naperville. So what does it mean to be a Cardinal? So our Cardinals are involved. We always encourage students to get involved in clubs and organizations. Um, our eSports, we just made an investment into eSports, bought uh, high powered computers. Um, forensics as well, speech and debate. Uh, they compete nationally, do very well. There's also scholarship off offers um, associated with that. Um, Latinx is one of our um, diversity groups on campus. WONCFM is our radio station, was ranked the top radio station in 2015. Um, so if you're looking to get into radio and broadcasting and journalism, there's a great program there for you as well. Um, Enactus is one of our business groups and then rec sports. Um, so if you just want to get out and have some fun, play some intramurals on campus, um, you know, there's a picture of spike ball there, uh, which was actually founded by an NCC alum um, and is headquartered in Naperville. So Cardinals are leaders, and then here's the many facets that they are in the classroom, in the lab, on the field, stage, community, and in the world. They're mentored. So here are some of the um, potential people that you could be working with. Again, I, I mentioned Cardinal First. Julie Carballo leads the Cardinal First um, program. Dorothy Plias, uh, she's the Director of Multicultural Affairs. Brian Rainville, Director of Faith and Action. These are people that you know aren't just a face. You know, These are people that you get to interact with on a daily basis. Um, they're difference makers. We have a center of social impact that actually was awarded the Ashoka um, Community Difference Award. Um, when we awarded it, we were only one of three campuses in the US that got that. Um, service trips, you can go either stateside or we do have um, service trips that go to Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, places like that. Sustainability, obviously front of mind, um, renewable energy, sustaining the planet. Um, so these people are very involved as well. And then on campus, we have the union, which is newly remodeled, and it hosts events such as like TEDx and things like that. Cardinals are launching careers here. You can see what some of the Cardinals have actually done. Um, George down here is a sports management. He's actually working within the Kansas City Royals um, program. And then in the classroom, I should say we have um, a student ratio of 13 to 1, average class size about 20. Each faculty member has a, a hundred or has a PhD within their um, field. Here's some of the programs too that we offer over 60. Um, here are some of the new labs that we put in our Amron Design and Automation, Molex Lab, a coffee lab, which is a very unique um, lab that we put in just last year. Wentz Concert Hall, State of the Art Acoustics, Yo-Yo Ma's played there, our greenhouse too as well. And then the admission process. So we have an, a free admission online uh, application on the website. We're also on Common App and the Coalition for College Access. Here's our um, requirements um, and then our our merit-based scholarships range from 20,000 to 26,000 with our 4.3 GPA that allows for an additional 4,000 for a total of 30. So again, any more questions on admission or anything like that, let us know, drop a question in the chat box. All right, thank you so much. If you have any questions for North Central College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have University of Southern Indiana. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Alec Reed. I'm an admissions counselor up at the University of Southern Indiana. Uh, I'm actually the Illinois counselor as well. And you know, one thing that's kind of cool about this event is that I only get six minutes to kind of tell you who we are and what we're about. And really that feels a lot like speed dating. And really in the first date, what we're trying to do is, you know, you're trying to get to know us, kind of know what we're about and who we are. And then you know, hopefully uh, you know, we can kind of build some interest from there. And and now that I kind of took some time to, to, to uh, introduce myself, six minutes turned to five, so I'll just go ahead and, uh, and get going here. 
So I kind of made this profile for you. Uh, it, you know, kind of gives you an overview of you know what we are and kind of you know what we're about. So if you look at our campus size, we currently have 10,000 plus students enrolled into the University of Southern Indiana. Now of that 10,000, 2,000 are dual credit or online only. So on any given day, you're gonna see closer to about 8,000 students uh, walking around campus, uh, which gives us, you know, what we think is this Goldilocks size. Uh, you know, it's not too small. Uh, to where it feels like your high school all over again. You know, you walk up the stairs, you trip, you know, everyone knows about it. You know, you don't want that to happen. Uh, but it's also not so big to where, you know, you're one of, you know, 30, 40,000 students walking around. You're kind of like shoulder checking them uh, to get to your, to your next class. And you get to your class and it's a form. Uh, you're like one of 200. In fact, your average class size, as you can see, is going to be about 19 students. Um, and this is ideal because really what it does is that it's me giving you this almost this private university feel uh, at the cost of you know, public tuition. And our tuition at USI uh, for the year is a little over $8,100 uh, for in-state. Now, you may be saying, Alec, that's great, that's in-state, but you know, we're in Illinois, you guys are in Indiana. Uh, how does that really help me? Uh, and if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see I you kind of bolded the Illinois Regional Award. So if you live in a handful of counties in Illinois, uh, you're gonna get in-state tuition just right off the bat, just for living there, almost kind of our way of giving you reciprocity, um, kind of you know, making the out of state go into in state, which saves you uh, quite a bit. Now, if you don't live uh, within those counties, uh, fear not, we have plenty of other out of state scholarships, as you can see that I listed. If you have a 3.5 GPA on a four point scale, um, we're going to give you this out of state top scholar uh, award. And what this does is it's going to take the out of state and it's going to go ahead uh, and make it in state as well. And we're also gonna go ahead and give you an additional $2,000 uh, on top of that. So really it's gonna be about a, a value of about 14,000. And you know, if you don't quite have that 3.5, you're more of that 2.75, 3.49, we're gonna go ahead and give you uh, the out of state grant, which is gonna give you a discount of $9,000. Not quite in state, uh, but uh, it is quite a, quite a bit of value. Um, I did go ahead and list our David L. Rice Merit Scholarship. Uh, all of our freshmen that apply to the university, uh, if they have a certain GPA, kind of starting at that 2.75 level, all the way up to the 4.0, uh, they're gonna get awarded an amount anywhere between $1,000 and $4,000. Uh, and if you're an Illinois Regional Award uh, eligible, you can be able to stack that Rice Scholarship on top of that award as well. Now, Another thing that's really important is obviously the area of study. You wanna to go to university, it's gonna have plenty of options for you. And as you can see, we have over 130 plus areas of study. So regardless of what your interests are, uh, I'm confident that we're gonna have something for you. And as you can see, our business school is AACSB accredited, accredited and we're less, of, less than 5% of business schools worldwide that have that accreditation. Our uh, health professions is 100% employed across clinical based uh, facilities. And nothing that you know I didn't list, but I go ahead and talk about is that our nursing program is number one uh, in the state of Indiana. If you look at the test scores, if you kind of look at you know graduation rates, getting jobs uh, elsewhere, and I, I included it in there just because I think it's really neat. Uh, we're also the first uh, first college in the state of Indiana to create and deploy satellite into orbit. Uh, you know, not only is that a cool fact, but kind of going back to the average class size of about 19. Um, is that you'll never have a TA or a GA teaching your classes or grading your papers. It's always gonna be the professor, the PhD, the expert in the field. And kind of with that just comes certain benefits such as, I mean, making connection uh, with your professor. You might have internships, um, but also there's plenty of opportunities for undergrad students to work on research. Uh, and that satellite was one of those a few years back. Also, you wanna stay involved. Uh, I know all of you are great students. You guys like to take on those extracurricular activities. And we have over 150 ways uh, to stay involved. Actually, it's probably getting closer to about 160 now. Uh, really be Greek life, uh, intramurals, uh, or kind of our student organizations, uh, whether it be you know, student government or uh, you know, political science society, really whatever it might be, uh, kind of a way to kind of build, in, build in your interest uh, inside the classroom, or maybe there's just passions outside the classroom that you want to eat that, you know, you don't want to give up. Um, so it's a great way to stay involved. But I mean, you also want it to feel like home. Uh, I included these 3D printouts, kind of of our uh, 
of our resident halls and our campus apartments. Uh, freshmen are allowed to live at both. Uh, the price is going to be the same regardless if you live at one or the other. Uh, you look, go into the resident hall here. You see that there is a common room. It comes with that couch. comes with a chair. comes with a mini fridge. Uh, does not come with a microwave. does not come with a coffee maker. So I have a roommate pay for that. Uh, <laughs> you go into the bedroom. As you can see, that you'll be sharing your bed with one person. So that's four people total uh, for the resident hall. Uh, you get your own closet and you do get your bathroom per bedroom. Um, and then you know, one thing you'll probably notice is that there is no kitchen. So if you look at the campus apartment, you'll see that it comes with the kitchen. Layout's pretty similar. It's a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah. So hopefully I was able to persuade you. Um, second date. I hope so, but maybe we can do it in person. I included our link to come visit campus. We have in-person tours uh, Monday through Saturday at 9.30 a.m. and at, again at 12.30 uh, p.m. And hopefully we can talk a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and thanks for listening to me. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for University of Southern Indiana, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have University of Michigan. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody, and greetings from the University of Michigan. My name is Rachel Taylor, and I'm an admissions counselor here with the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Alongside me tonight is my colleague, Megan Lakita. She's been helping me out with the chat this evening. And we both happen to be Michigan alumni, so we are very excited to be here this evening to share a little bit about the Michigan experience from both an admissions and a student perspective today. When introducing students to the University of Michigan, we first like to reflect upon our past as an institution, where we are today, and where we see ourselves going in the future. So I'd first like to acknowledge that U of M resides on the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands of the Anishinaabe people. In 1817, the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations made the largest single land transfer to the University of Michigan so that their children could be educated. We recognize the history of the displacement of native communities that facilitated the founding of the University of Michigan. We also acknowledge the sovereignty of tribal lands and we want to reaffirm the contemporary and ancestral Anishinaabek ties to this land, as well as the profound contributions of Native Americans to the institution. Just as we acknowledge the ancestry of the land on which we live, I also feel compelled to speak to both the reality and serious impacts of racial injustice in our country. Black Lives Matter, and we acknowledge the active role that the university must play in the conversation around these injustices and in forging a path toward positive change. Our efforts begin with fostering a diverse, equitable, and inclusive community for our students, faculty, and staff here on campus. And I also wanted to take just a moment to acknowledge the injustices that the Asian American community has faced in the recent days and months. Recognizing that U of M is still a majority white institution, we have an ongoing focus that's spearheaded by our DEI office on improving the climate of diversity to be supportive of all of our students and staff. And we'll share some of those resources in the chat now, including some of our campus goals and student offices. So who are we? Who is the University of Michigan? We are a large public research institution located in Southeast Michigan in Ann Arbor. We're consistently ranked as one of the best college towns in the US. Ann Arbor is just about a four or four and a half hour drive away from Chicago, depending on where you're located around the Chicagoland area. Together, U of M and Ann Arbor really provide the quintessential college town experience with over 300 different restaurants to explore, NCAA Division I Big Ten athletic events for 29 different varsity sports teams, and a spirited campus community that attracts students from all 50 states and more than 100 different countries. In fact, as you can see from the map, Illinois is consistently ranked as one of the most popular states for our students to hail from. I also like to share beyond the geographic diversity, our students identify um, with a diversity of backgrounds, races, religions, cultures, and educational interests. So about 14% of our students identify as the first in their family to go to college, 18% of students are Pell eligible, 27% self-identify as students of color, and 17% identify as a part of the LGBTQ plus community. Our vibrant campus community, coupled with the opportunity to learn alongside your peers, will enhance your U of M education while preparing you to work, live, and collaborate with others for a lifetime to come. At Michigan, our students pursue over 280 different degree programs. 
70% of which are ranked in the top 10 nationally, and over 90% are ranked in the top 20. So whatever you're interested in studying, you'll have highly regarded opportunities available to you. Many popular majors include pre-med and pre-law pathways, engineering, the Ross Bachelor of Business Administration program, nursing, musical theater, political science, communication studies, psychology, and so much more. Many students are also pleasantly surprised to find that our student to faculty ratio is actually just 15 to one, and only about 7% of our classes have more than 100 students. Outside of the classroom, students participate in a robust array of extracurricular activities, including Michigan learning communities, identity-based STEAM communities, and over 1,600 student-led organizations, such as the Michigan Daily, which is our campus newspaper, future Black healthcare professionals, La Casa, Trans Marathon, student government, fraternity and sorority life, and a multitude of university support services, such as the Comprehensive Studies Program or the First Generation Student Gateway. U of M is also recognized as the number one public research institution in the US, and over 1,300 undergraduate students are engaged in research. Each year, we invest more than $1.5 billion towards research initiatives. And yes, even as, your as, as early as your first year at U of M, you could contribute to research. Becoming a U of M student unlocks a lifetime of potential that stays with you well beyond your years in Ann Arbor, as we have more than 630,000 living alumni around the world that provide a valuable persona and professional network for Michigan graduates. This community is really at the heart of the Michigan experience, of the Michigan experience. So I know everybody wants to know a little bit more about our application review processes. We've had a couple of questions about this already. So we use a holistic application review. We aim to get to know the whole you. So to do so, we consider your academic strengths, the rigor of the curriculum that you've elected, your extracurricular involvements, letters of recommendation that speak to your character and engagement in your high school, and essays that provide insight to the person that you are and your interest in U of M. We also know that the past year has, pre has presented a lot of unprecedented challenges. We have adjusted our application process in several important ways to support the class of 2021, including a test flexible admissions policy and a delayed early action deadline. And for the class of 2022, we're going to continue to monitor the pandemic and we'll release any future announcements or changes uh, to our process on the website. Please also know at this time we're hosting all of our events virtually and encourage you to learn more about the U of M community and the depth of our application review process by watching our virtual information session. We hope that you found this overview helpful. We look forward to answering some more of your questions this evening. So if there's anything else we can help you with, both Megan and my, uh, my contact information is listed here. So thank you all and go blue. All right, awesome, thank you so much. If you have any quick last minute questions for University of Michigan, please put them in the Q&A or follow up with them after this session, because as we all know, time flies when you are having a great time. And so we are at the end of our session. I just asked our presenters, if you could go ahead and turn your videos on to help me say goodbye to our attendees, that would be fantastic. I just wanna thank everybody so much for joining. Thank you to our panelists and presenters. Uh, you are absolutely fantastic in giving some great information about your institutions. Also, attendees, thank you all so much for being here. And I hope you learned a couple things about these institutions as well and can check them out. Uh, also, a couple things before you head out, a quick survey, a very quick, I mean, the words are literally on your screen, very quick, four question survey will appear after you close this window. So please, please make sure to give us some feedback. Also sign up for more sessions. Like I said earlier, this is one out of many college presentations for this evening. So go ahead and sign up for another session for the next time slot. Also, last but not least, if you're trying to relive the fun for this evening, or if maybe mom missed out, dad, grandma, a friend wants to check out some of these institutions, well, they certainly can by catching that recording coming in the next coming days. And that recording will be available at strivescan.com backslash Illinois. With that said, you all, thank you again so, so much. Please stay safe, stay warm if you're in a cold place, and have a great night. See y'all later.